What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. Hope everybody's doing well. I am back home and getting back to the swing of things, so let's dive into some crypto news. First up, to talk about LG and HBAR, we can see that LG launches its own sustainable NFT platform enabling millions of users to quickly and easily buy and sell digital artwork on the Hedera network. We can see the carbon footprint, we can see the amount per transfer right there, and also over 1 million platform participants. Here's a quick overview, LG is a global leader in consumer electronics and has deployed a fully integrated NFT marketplace accessible through LG televisions that now allows their users to easily and quickly buy, sell, and display digital art straight from their device. So this use case is centered around NFTs and the challenge today is in order for LG to successfully deploy their NFT marketplace, they need an underlying distributed ledger, maybe not even a blockchain per se, maybe a DAG like Hashgraph, that would not only support the millions of transactions that would be taking place, but also provide a simple frictionless user experience for customers that are not familiar with NFT trading. In the solution, LG chose Hedera as the public ledger underpinning their NFT marketplace thanks to its ability to deliver a seamless user experience through its ability to safely support over 10,000 transactions per second with a transparent and low-cost fee structure. But most importantly, Hedera was also chosen as the only carbon-negative enterprise-grade public ledger in the market. So we can see LG right here on Hedera's website under the council, side-by-side -side Boeing and Google. And remember, back in September, LG picks Hedera for the television NFTs. So we have this new NFT marketplace called LG Art Lab that plugs into Hedera. And remember that LG is to launch a crypto wallet on Hedera's blockchain, and this is called Walipto right there. And this wallet application should launch before the end of the year. Now, just because I was curious, I wanted to see the market capitalization of LG today. So we can see right here in Korean won, in translating that into US dollar, LG's market cap is approximately $9.8 billion, so almost $10 billion. Now, it's crazy to even consider, Ripple the company, a fintech company, was last valued at approximately $15 billion. And understand that they don't even have XRP on their balance sheet for that valuation, which is super impressive. An LG Art Lab just posted this today. NFT marketplaces have been battling it out to reduce royalty fee requirements as active traders run to lower fee exchanges. Absolutely. Now, there's some very high royalty structures on platforms like OpenSea. And of course, we know Nike, um, Adidas, Gucci, all of these brands are producing NFTs and the royalty sales are where all the money is. Now we can see the HTS or Hedera token service has the ability to set one or multiple royalty fees in the contract. Very cool. And if you'd like to learn more about NFT royalty fees, Hedera has a blog right on their website shared by Michael called NFT Royalty Fees, Everything You Need to Know. So you can use a custom royalty fee method, which allows you to set all parameters for your custom NFT royalty fee. So each time an NFT is transferred or bought and sold, the Hedera network will charge a fraction of the value exchanged in this transaction. And if you're a developer and you want to see some code examples, they're available right in this blog. Next up, we had Vladimir Putin recently asking for creation of a digital payment system for international settlements. Now, of course, Russia is one of the BRICS nations. This has been in the works for quite some time, and there are some other countries besides just the BRICS nations that are represented. And big shout out to King Solomon for finding over a year ago the Russian Central Bank. Let me repeat that. The Russian Central Bank trialed XRP. Not a little tiny bank, the Russian Central Bank of one of the largest nations. Now, does that mean there's plans to use XRP? Are they simply future-proofing like most enterprises are? And they're testing different technology to see where they can improve upon or maybe look for ideas? You tell me, but super interesting. Next up, by good old CNBC, of course, this is funny timing. Bitcoin could plunge 70% to $5,000. Standard Chartered predicts in possible 2023 surprise. And Standard Chartered outlined a number of possible scenarios we feel are underpriced by the markets. Now, speaking of Standard Chartered, this is actually a Ripple partner, and we can see back in 2016, let me zoom in a little bit, Standard Chartered Bank right here announced it has made a strategic investment in Ripple, a leading distributed ledger company. The investment will further accelerate the bank's digitization agenda in the area of DLT. We have Alex Manson, Global Head of Transaction Banking for Standard Chartered. And remember, these banks make bank off of transaction banking. Citi, HSBC, and JP Morgan, according to Ashish Birla, formerly at Ripple, account for 80% of all international payments. And that sounds a little centralized to me, whether it's three banks, even if it were 10 or 15 banks overseeing 80% of all of the value transacted across borders, even with their subsidiaries included, that is highly centralized. And Ripple, the company, has already partnered with hundreds of financial institutions across the globe. Remember, 90% of RippleNet's volume is outside of the U.S. 90% of their partners reside outside of the U.S. 
Now we do know for a fact there have been a variety of central banks, even beyond Russia, that have at least trialed XRP and are today looking at the XRP ledger. Not for XRP per se, but the actual system, the network for central bank digital currencies. And for anybody new to the channel, yes, that is true. You can Google it right now. I mean, we can even go to... You can go to omfif.com. This is the official monetary and financial institutions forum. We can click about. Just to understand the caliber of investors behind this. We can see with investable assets of $43 trillion. And OMFIF is one of the largest independent think tanks for central banking, economic policy, and public investment. And looking at OMFIF's website, looking at the DMI Symposium, we can see partners including Algorand and Ripple. Accenture, one of the first Ripple investors. We have Meta, Visa, and Control Find as we scroll down for James, our guy James Wallace the VP of Central Bank Engagements and Central Bank Digital Currencies for Ripple. Alongside the Bank of Japan, Bank of Jamaica, HSBC, we have Algorand, and I think this needs to be updated. We have the U.S. Treasury. We have Amazon Web Services. We have RTGS Global. You have Meta and the DTCC. And don't forget, under Hyperledger's foundation, under their premier members, the top six include Accenture, yet again, the DTCC, the Fed before the Fed, IBM, and a few others. Next to American Express, which is a Ripple partner. You have Deutsche Telekom and their subsidiaries, T-Mobile. We have Filecoin. You got Hedera, Huawei, FedEx, CVS, Quant, R3. Siemens is another one we have to keep an eye on. Soramitsu is also listed in the Casper Partners as a DeFi partner in one of the documents. We have NTT Data. Of course, you remember that famous XRP infographic years ago. I know some people aren't a fan of that. We have Oracle. You can think QNT, their partner right there. We have Verizon. We have Tech Mahindra. Even have Walmart. We've got the company Ripple, Blockchain Service Network for Casper, the Moscow Exchange, Lenovo. We have IOHK, so you could say Cardano. We have IP Week going live with 1 million patents or NFTs on Casper's blockchain before January. Also have Energy Web Token, can't forget about that. I see a lot more people talking about Energy Web Token now. We were doing some videos on it back in 2020, but yeah, I do like the project a lot. And if you go to Crack in the Exchange on TradingView, you can see it's all time high and some crazy wicks to the upside. And of course, we got Casper Labs right here as well, based in Zug, Switzerland. So coming back to this prediction of a $5,000 Bitcoin put out right now, which is interesting, by Standard Chartered, said rising yields along with a plunge in technology stocks will lead to an acceleration of the Bitcoin sell-off and cause further bankruptcies and collapses in the crypto world. And I think we're seeing that right now across the board after the whole FTX implosion. I'm just sick of talking about it at this point. And of course, there most likely will be even crazier things happening in the future. I just don't want to get too distracted by it and stay focused for the next thing. Now, after a very unfortunate month in the crypto market and after this FTX debacle and a lot of bad actors in this space, this had nothing to do with the underlying technology of cryptocurrency. These are bad actors in the space. There will always be bad people. And yes, it negatively affected the crypto market. There's no other way to put it. And in a lot of ways, a lot of investors are going to have an even worse taste in their mouth when they think of crypto. Now, during the bull run, everybody and their grandma is calling you, asking you how to buy. But during a bear market, during the typical 80 to 90% crashes, it's a scam. And this is rinse and repeat every couple of years. Now, we could make the argument that there's going to be less investors or big institutional investors that want to put big sums of money into this technology. But I would also argue after this huge collapse that this is going to be pushing legitimate money and legitimate funding towards legitimate projects. So in a way, this is leveling the playing field and washing out all of the garbage in this crypto ocean. So in my opinion, over the long term, this will be a good thing for the legitimate crypto projects in the future with a level playing field to now be recognized for solving real problems with real investments. It's going to help audits. It's going to be pushing market participants, investments, companies, exchanges to be more transparent, have proof of reserves, all things that we need in a maturing asset class. And no thanks to the U.S. government that has not done anything in terms of providing clarity. All of the businesses are leaving the U.S. and they are going where they're treated best. And we're actually just seeing that crypto builders and creators and entrepreneurs and CEOs of exchanges are actually making this change all on their own. So during these terrible events where people lost hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, throughout this entire roller coaster ride is forcing the crypto market to mature sooner and get their act together. We even see Elon Musk right here replying right here to Will. SBF donating $40 million to not go to jail for stealing over $10 billion is one of the highest ROI trades of all time. Elon Musk goes on to say, that's just the publicly disclosed number. His actual support of Dem elections is probably over $1 billion. The money went somewhere, so where did it go? 
What are your guys' thoughts on this? And I'm sure this video is going to get shadow banned like always now that I said a few keywords that the YouTube algorithm might not like. Now, once again, is it impossible for Bitcoin to go sub 10K? No, we do have open gaps on the CME futures chart under $10,000. I'll never say never in crypto. Anything is possible. The second I say it's impossible, it's going to happen. And what will I be doing if Bitcoin crashes to 5K? First off, I'm really not heavy in Bitcoin whatsoever, but I will be buying some altcoins, my high conviction plays that I see building real solutions for real customers at scale. And I can't even imagine some of the discounted prices for alts if Bitcoin were to hit 5k. Now me personally, I think it's entirely possible that we bottomed for the market. And no matter what, whether we go a little bit lower, down to 12-14k or we pop up, I think Bitcoin still has a very strong chance of doing a big retracement in quarter one. And I'm talking 30-40k. So no, I'm not interested in capitulating, giving up on the market, and selling my alts right now. I'm much more interested in just dollar cost averaging, and anything I invest into crypto, it's money that I can let sit for the next few years. I don't need it to pay bills. So I'm not emotionally attached to it. If I'm DCing into other alts or HBAR, Casper, I try to strategically dollar cost average. It's just not a daily thing. For example, if you know HBAR pumps 20%, I don't want to really dollar cost average that day. I'll really dollar cost average whichever asset is at the lowest. I want to get my average price as low as possible. DCing after a pump doesn't do me any good. So some days, if I'm not dollar cost averaging, I'm trying to keep that cash flow up so I have US dollar on the side to strategically dollar cost average when the opportunity presents itself. Maybe we're closing some wicks on the downside to grab some liquidity, something like that. Hey guys, I was just working on a really long chart video for XRP Casper and a few altcoins, but it actually didn't record correctly. So I'm just going to go over one more point and call it a day and just stay tuned for future videos. All right, so... Shared by BlockWorks, we have this. Nexo will gradually phase out U.S. operations as a direct result of dead-end attempts to gain regulatory clarity in the United States, unfortunately. So Nexo is another crypto lending platform. This I have personally used in the past. I've never used BlockFi, I've never used Celsius, and Nexo typically has been okay. Unfortunately, it's sad to see this occur. And going forward, I will not be lending any crypto to Nexo. And if I have any terms ending, I'm actually going to end them as soon as possible. I think I do have a little XRP on the platform, just earning a little yield, but I'm going to get that back as soon as possible and put it back to cold storage. So please be safe, everybody. And lending platforms specifically in the crypto market are dangerous. I know I personally chat with buddies and fantasize about taking collateralized debt positions at the absolute bottom. But unfortunately, it's just too risky in today's landscape. I don't want to lose sleep stressing over any investments, so I'm just staying away from any lending platforms, specifically during this bear market. When things turn around, or maybe with some DEXs in the future, I'll be open to it. But right now, getting my money off of Nexo every single crypto exchange. Unless I'm actively trading, it is off of the exchange. I have money with my OTC broker, but that requires multi-sig, so you have to have multiple signatures to even control my capital, which is not going to happen. So that's in cold storage, completely safe. And any money that I have on a centralized exchange for trading or running trading bots is something I'm willing to risk. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate hitting the like button and subscribing. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, my link tree is linked right in the top of this YouTube video description with all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.